Hi everyone, my name is Onira and I am back. So before I get into why I haven't been here for a while, this video is going to be in two parts and it's just going to be basically a big wrap up in the months that I didn't get a chance to do a wrap up. So part one is going to focus on the books I read in May and, and part two will focus on the books I read in June. The reason why I've been away, basically I've just been emotionally, mentally, physically drained. I've been so tired and I've noticed something. The thing that is happening to me now this year has also been happening to me last year as well around the same time. So I don't know if it's like a seasonal thing because where I live we're in winter now. Well, like winter, but still cool and still cooler than summer, I can tell you that. That is why I have been away. I took a few weeks off and I feel like I'm back now. So let's get on to talking about the books I read in May. The first book I read in the month of May is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. It's a graphic novel series following Nick and Charlie. Charlie is gay, but okay, this is where I get confused between the characters. One boy is gay, he knows he's been gay for his whole life basically, and the second boy, he wasn't even aware that he could be bisexual. And it's basically a love story between them. They ended up becoming friends first, and like I said, a love story between them happens. This book helped me get out a bit of a reading slump. And trigger warning, it does contain mental health issues such as self-harm, eating disorders, and mental health issues. Like this... I would have to say this would have to be the most serious book out of the series because we started to get to see some serious issues with like mental health in the third one. We get little bits and pieces of it, but this one takes it up to like a different level. It kicks it up a notch and it depicts a lot of what people with mental illness goes through, like realizing that you do have a mental illness, talking to someone about having a mental illness, admitting to yourself that you need help and what it means to have a really good strong support system surrounding you like friends and family that you know that you can trust and that support you to no end. I got choked up at some points like it was just that good and I said it once and I'll say it again, it is a very, very heartwarming series. Uh, I don't know how long the series is going to last, but I do know there is going to be a fifth one that's going to be coming out next year, so I'm very looking forward to that. I feel like I've been reading this next book for ages, so the fact that I'm reviewing the first book in the main series is quite surprising to me because I feel like I've talked to you about the main series, but... <laughs> I think I'm getting confused with the TBRs. And the first book in the main series of the Witcher series, which is Blood of Elves. Now, it says here in the back of the book, for over, a, for, over a, for over a century, humans, dwarves, gnomes and elves have lived together in a relative peace, but now the races are fighting once more, killing their own kind and each other. As the threat of war hangs over the land, a Geralt of Rivia must protect the child of prophecy, Ciri, from those who are hunting her for her extraordinary power, for the extraordinary power that she holds. Power that could save the world or destroy it. This time, Geralt may have met his match. Now, this is definitely political fantasy, so it's not a book that's like clear cut that you know the motives of characters you have to pay attention and take your time with these books if you read too fast to try and get through it you'll miss out on things we get more perspectives from multiple characters in this book and it kind of threw me off a bit because with the um short story collection i was just used to being in Geralt's perspective and it's more focused on the women. You do get some perspective from Geralt, but it is mainly about the women. I think we get Triss, Yennefer, who else? Someone else as well, but I, from what I can remember, it does focus more on the women here. Oh yes, we get Triss, Yennefer, Ciri, and Geralt. So we get those ones. Oh, and Dandelion. You can't forget Dandelion, you really can't. I was a bit mixed about it, like I didn't realise how political this book was going to be. It wasn't until I read some reviews about it, just like Skim read some reviews about this book that I realised things were starting to become a little bit more clear to me. And it is a slow burn fantasy, it really is, but it does move along. So you're not just waiting book on book and nothing's happening. Things are happening, it's just taking its time. 
to get there because it it needs that build up because there is so much like political scheming and different perspectives to try and get your head around and try and pinpoint what you think is going to happen and who was on whose side like that is that's a really tricky thing to try and understand who is on whose side and Ciri's powers are a bit of a mystery I have a bit of a theory that it has something to do with her bloodline and obviously like blood of elves of course it has to you know it's July that I'm filming this and I'm up to the third book now in the main series and the titles give a bit of a clue away so if you're cluey and brainy enough to understand it then I think you'll be okay. I think I might be starting to like Yennefer too. I didn't like her that much in the in the short story collections but I'm starting to like her in the main stories and her relationship with Ciri is quite complicated. It's almost like a stepmother daughter kind of relationship like a strained but still a very loving relationship between the two. And in the fashion of the short story collections, we do get to see um, perspectives from people, I guess you could say uh, that the war affects, so the minority races and the ones that don't want the war, the ones that do want the war, you get that perspective as well. Which I feel like in the fantasy books, you get to see the perspective of war from royalty. But to see it from, I guess you could say civilians or people that are on the front line, it's it's different, it's refreshing, and it's quite an interesting take on what war or battle in a fantasy setting could be like. And also about races trying to live in harmony. Overall, I'm giving this a five star read because it was just that damn good. And season two is coming in in December. Of course it was going to, it was pretty obvious. But anyway, season two looks so damn good, it really does. I also forgot to say, I think I gave this one a 5 star, did I? Yes I did, I gave this one a 5 star as well. The third book I read is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And let me look at my notes because I can't remember the synopsis off the top of my head. So, it follows 17 year old single mother Amani Santiago as she makes tough choices not only for her but for her daughter and abuela. The place where she can truly be free from the burden is in the kitchen where she lets her talents roam free. With everyone telling her what to do, not only throughout her life, but also with what she wants to do, after she graduates high school, she decides to refuse the rules that others set out for her and make her own decisions. So that's basically like a synopsis of what the plot of the story is about. And I have counted the phrase, I released a breath I didn't know I had been holding so many times in this damn book. It was ridiculous. It was like it happened so often. So, so often. Like, it was pretty ridiculous. It really was. This is my first book from this author, Elizabeth Acevedo, and I'm definitely going to be checking out more of her books. This one is really good, really heartwarming. And chapters are so nice and short. Characters feel real. There are very strong female relationships in this book. And also what it means to have a fractured relationship with an estranged parent. I'm not going to say who it is because you have to read the book. There is some really great social commentary in here about race and what it means to be a person of colour that I wasn't expecting but it was still good and it's kind of disgusting and a little... it's it's not good how some people are so ignorant about Imani's heritage. Now if I'm getting this wrong I apologise but I believe she's I know she's Latino, but is it is it Afro-Latino, like African Latino? Because she has an African-American parent, but also a Latino parent as well. So don't quote me 100% on that. I'm still new to that area as well. So I apologize if I get this wrong. Like, and some of the prejudices that people of color face as well, I think is a really good topic of conversation to have, especially in, in an environment where a money is a single as a single mother to her child and the faces, the challenges that she faces not only just with school but also with family life and life outside of school as well. She has been given great opportunities to enhance her skills and to learn from the very best in the world of culinary arts and to also have an understanding of what it takes to both work and run a kitchen like telling people this got to be done, that's got to be done, chop chop chop. 
like literally chop 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 because <laughs> this is some of the challenges that I face too as a 25 year old just people pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for her to take uni or college wherever you live it's usually a university here where I live in Australia and it kind of infuriated me a little bit. I can understand the appeal especially for her with um her wanting to pursue culinary arts because with that career you would most likely have to have a degree of some sort especially when you're in that field but I also know that there are like short courses you can do so just the idea that like uni 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 push 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 it kind of frustrates me because not everyone is made for uni. She said her, so herself that she was struggling with some subjects and that she didn't really know whether she wanted to go to uni or college or not. But overall, I was very happy with how the book ended. And overall, this book left me feeling such pride and such respect for Amani. Like, even though she is a fictional character, I just wish her all the best in her life. The next book I read is the first part in the continuation series of the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series, and the fourth book being A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. I could read to you the back of the book, but it is kind of spoilery, and I can't remember off the top of my head what the series is about, other than Jacob finding out that he has these powers. The peculiar children that have these abilities, and something to do with the whites and that they're bad people or bad creatures or whatever. I don't entirely remember off the top of my head 100%. I had originally given this a four star read and I don't understand why because after reading the fifth one I realized I don't like the continuation series that much and so I dropped this rating to a three stars. I, for I keep forgetting to say but this one with the fire run with the fire run high is a five star read i got to remember to tell you the ratings after it. And the reason why I gave this book a three stars is because upon further reflection and after reading the fifth one, I realised this book was just fine. Like, it was okay. The thing I love and am starting to really also not love as well in this series is the children. I love the children in here because they have such a great not respect for each other but they work well together they complete each other oh they have there's like great communication and banter between them and just sarcastic little moments look as a whole i do love the series like i love the way the pictures like intertwined with the story and it's just so good i really love the pictures in here it's just about like without getting into spoilers Jacob is learning more about what his grandfather does, who he is, just peeling back the layers that is his grandfather and, and him realising that, oh, my, fa my grandfather, and there goes the dog, my grandfather lied to me about things, but yet he was also kind of telling me about my potential future as well. Like, it was really good to see that perspective, like, him getting a new outlook on his grandfather. Maggie, come on! <laughs> the American peculiar dim didn't really feel that dangerous when we were in the American peculiar dim. It only really told you, like towards the end of the book, how dangerous it really was. Like it didn't really feel like I guess it was kind of in a way, but I don't know. I don't know, I'm feeling very mixed about the continuation of the series and I can't wait for, and I can't wait to finish it off so I can just unhaul it. I feel like I should have just left off at book three because it probably would have left me feeling a bit better about the series if it just had remained a trilogy. Oh yes, as well. I felt the children were incredibly naive. They think themselves to be so mature and I guess there would be some sort of maturity, but they were stuck in this loop, right? For thousands of years, they was, they're still kids, essentially. They're still stuck in this routine of being a kid. They haven't, like, probably had real life experiences for them to mature as they say that they are. And, oh, I don't know, just, the kids were both a good thing and a bad thing in this book. And it kind of really rubbed me the wrong way. And on top of that, there is this whole prophecy thing and I kind of feel like it felt like it was a thrown in there just as an excuse to extend the series. Like I don't even 
it has, it has been a while since I've read the first three in the book, but I don't remember there being a prophecy. I really don't. And like I said, this one got three stars, and I might as well continue on to the fifth one. And overall, probably the weakest, it's the shortest, but the weakest in the book. There's this new character, like introduction to a new character, which is quite interesting. I'm not going to lie, it is interesting. We get to see this character at the end of Map of Days, and this is the Conference of Birds. The Conference of the Birds. There's the fifth one. It was very, the love, the relationship between Jacob and this this particular character is very reminiscent of the first one, but it was very insta-lovey, like you'll it's, which is very typical of why A, I'm feeling that a character will look at another character and be like, I'm in love with this person. Like, sometimes it can be done good, but just in why A, it annoys the absolute crap out of me. Um, do I have any more to say? No, because that was it. That's all I had to say. I did not like it, and I can only expect worse things. And the sixth one. Like I said, I just can't wait to get rid of it and be done with it. I really can't. And I think I gave that one... What star rating did I give that one? Yeah, I gave that one a three stars. And the sixth book I've read in the month of May is a recent release, and that, and that is Project Tale Mary by Andy Weir. It is a sci-fi novel. A man who gets lost in outer space. He doesn't know what his name is or why he is even in outer space. But as his memories come back to him, he realises that he is... Humanity's only and best bet to save Earth from disaster. This book is incredibly sci-fi. Very hardcore sci-fi, especially with terminologies and especially with in terms of ships and how, like spaceships and how they work out like the gravity and stuff like that. But there were some aspects of the science that I did understand. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's about life forms, I guess you could say, and how research is done on life forms. That's all I'm going to say about it. And some of the terminology did go over my head a little bit. And I read this book at the time where it was either a solar or a lunar eclipse happening. And it was truly or awe inspiring and transformative to my reading taste and it filled me with wonder that there is this whole solar system this whole galaxy and universe out there that is unexplored kind of gave me a bit of an existential crisis because it ended up looking at a whole bunch of space and like galaxy related type of videos you know the ones where like if this planet or this moon were to replace like Earth's moon, what would it look like? And it, it, yeah, it, it's terrifying. It really, truly is. And after having this experience, I definitely think I could also be more of a sci-fi reader. I have watched quite a lot of sci-fi movies and TV shows, so there should not be a reason why I shouldn't love sci-fi books as well. Be the beginning of this book had me absolutely laughing my head off. There is a reading vlog I did about this book and it actually shows me how much I laughed in this scene of the book. I'll link it in the video and also in the description down below if you want to check that out. Like I said, this book does deal with flashbacks. There is this one particular character. Well, first of all, it was very interesting to see from the flashbacks how things happened and what hap what's happened to Earth to make this character be humanity's last hope. For survival and anyway there is this female character right she's in the flashback scenes that she has such incredible power and it's truly terrifying because she will do whatever she can and whatever she will to get what she wants i don't think i'd call her a villain per se but she's more of a complicated character or a anti-villain anti-hero i don't know which of the two kind of character. All I can say is it had me laughing, it had me in a state of constant wonder, it was entertaining and there is a movie coming out of this book starring Ryan Gosling I believe. I'm very excited to see the story on the big screen. I gave it, oh did I give it an extra? I think I may have given it 4, 4.5, 4.75 stars out of 5. Now I'm going to quickly blitz through the last two books because I have finished a series and that is the Themis Files. I have read Waking Gods, 
which is the second book by Sylvain Nouvel. The series basically is about a young little girl. She is riding her bike one night. She falls into a hole into this big metallic hand or big metal hand. And that same little girl is also now the grown-up young woman, young adult that is in charge of finding other parts of this robot. I really enjoyed this book. I feel like it did have a little bit more of a similar kind of feel to the first book from what I can remember because it has been quite a while since I've read the first one. It is more political, especially in terms of how another country or what another country does in terms of what happens if an alien life form comes down to earth like what happens then like obviously in a fictional sense though there were some sad moments some twists i didn't see coming and the last book i read is only human which is the third book of the themius files trilogy by sylvain nouvelle overall i feel really conflicted about how i feel about this book we do get to see why themius is or was left on Earth and what the purpose of the robot is for. And on the other hand, this book felt a lot more philosophical and a lot more of an exploration of humanity, which in my opinion kind of left this book feeling a little bit disjointed, just a little bit. And I was surprised about how much this book revolves around race because there was some pretty good social commentary about races Obviously in a few years time I think I might give this book another bit of a reread because like I said I didn't feel this book was a bit disjointed but then at the same time it kind of made sense. Like I think a lot of people did not end up liking the last book in this series and I can see why. I just think I need to read the first one and just kind of like binge it instead of reading the first one have a few years break and then read two and three. I think I just need that binging I just need to binge it I think so in a few years time I will revisit this and I think I gave this book what did I give it yeah so with my mixed feelings and everything I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 okay the plane is violating my space and there goes a book hey okay. those are the eight books I read in total it was a pretty good reading month, I'm not going to lie. Even though some books were like around three stars or whatever, it was still overall a very good reading month. Seriously, get off me. Keeps like annoying my hair. But the actual plant fell down not long ago and it hasn't been put back properly since. You should have seen the stones that were everywhere. Oh my god, it was terrible. Anyway, that is it for this wrap up of May. I apologise for the lightness of this. I'm hoping to get back on, like back on my game, and yeah. Ooh, let me give you some stats, shall I? Eight books in total, four were male, two were female, and overall the pages were 3,060 pages, which is I think the most I've ever read. That's quite a lot. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like, and make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what books you have read in the month of May. It is a little bit later, but I still am curious. And if you want to subscribe to my channel to see more content, you can do so. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And I'll see you for the June wrap-up. So, goodbye!